Good morning, Brandon Hardison, President of Champion Strategies, with our ongoing series of public speaking. We talked about all of you great folks that will be engaged as uh, new supervisors, new managers. Also, if you're in the sales space or public speaking space and you wanted to do more as far as front of the room, hey, things have changed a little bit, so now we have this little box that we need to try to master, but we're coming back. We'll, we'll, we'll get back on that. I also tried to tell you, I tried to look at all of this. You can get this free on any content that's out there, or you can pay for some reputable opportunities at schools, institutions, and whatever rocks your boat. But if you want to be a public speaker, you have to be good at it. Now, today I want to focus on those people that are heading back to school, those first year teachers that are going to be in front of the room of our babies. You have a very important job. So, one day you're going to be creative and you're going to say, hey, let's do some public speaking for our students. So, just want to touch on some tips because I have been through this before. As a 10-year high school teacher, I had debate and mock prowl, but I tried to do some things in my classroom, so you had to disguise it a little bit. So that is the first tip if you're going to try to introduce public speaking for your school students because it goes a long way for them down the line. But the first tip, uh, don't call it public speaking. Uh, don't call it public speaking. Uh, we need to create an importance around it. So when you use other words like uh, playing, giving a monologue, kids can open up a little bit more when you do so say that. If we can minimize that fear, because that's what they're thinking about, I got to get in front of this big group. So if you can minimize that by changing the name, I know that you will be successful with it. So not that hard, but just keep that in mind. Just don't go in front of the kids and say, hey, we're going to do some public speaking. You'll shut them down in a second. Number two, less of the study, more practice. Coming from an old ball coach, once again, less study, more of the practice. In other words, when I was in high school, and we did do some speaking. What we did was try to incorporate a lot of study with a lot of practice. Role play, role play, role play. So when you do a lot of practicing and they have an opportunity to speak, small portions of a speech, but still they're getting an opportunity to do the little things as far as the eye contact, covering the room, standing tall, all of these things they can do. So always try to keep in mind that less of the study, more of the practice. We put too much focus on technique with the young babies. We rather get them to understand how to be a little bit more comfortable and confident when they're in front of a group. Break the children into small groups. When you put the students into small groups, we get them to start thinking about how this team, their group, is going to do compared to the other team. Competition. Uh, America is built on competition. Capitalism is the great, best thing there. And no matter what no one says, everybody likes competition. So if we can break them into small groups, let them be creative, let them come up with something, and then present it to the rest of the groups, we're taking this public speaking and putting it on the shelf they just see that they're taking parts of the speech and moving it over. Uh, what I did do, I did debate and I did mock trial, but this is how I looked and learned at some of my other students and see if I had something on the bench that wasn't coming out for the 
for the varsity team. Now, last thing for today, because we want to do this in two parts, don't want to really overload you. How about playing some fun impromptu games? You need to be careful with impromptu games and you need to choose the ones that are fun the ones that uh, create a comfortable situation for everyone. So create impromptu games that start off really easy to, 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 to build some confidence. And then we can get a little bit more structured as we go through. Impromptu games are great to help kids to think on the spot. I believe the fear of public speaking comes because when they're up there, they don't know what to do on the spot, but with impromptu, you can help work them to do this. So go back over it again. Don't call it public speaking. Find another word, you'll find it, right? Less study, more practice, small bites, get them to understand it. Give group situations because you learn a lot when you have them in group situations. and give them an opportunity for some creative by doing some impromptu. Now, that's part one. Uh, tomorrow morning, we'll look at part two. This is important. The more you can stop being a lecturer and give them an opportunity to be involved the better off you're going to be. I know you have a curriculum to go through. I know there are certain things that your supervisor is asking you to stay on point with. But believe me, in the long run, our job is to teach our babies. And the biggest thing is to think, to rationalize. And the best way to do it is through public speaking. I don't care what your uh, discipline is going to be. It will help you out in the long run. So we'll be back tomorrow with part two. So think about some of those things you first year teachers. Once again, I'm behind you. I know how it is coming up to you. So Brandon Hardison, as always in parting, going out and making a champion.